I would like to recommend uh, one of my um, favorite Catalan authors, uh, which is um, Victor Català. <laughs> Victor Català and she's known as Victor Català but her real name was Caterina Albert. Victor Català is a male name that she took after um, publishing her first um, theatre piece. The, this theatre piece called La Infanticida was about a woman that, was, um, that got pregnant uh, being um, not being married and she had so many pressures uh, because of that that she ended by killing her own daughter. Catherine Albert sent this short piece to, um, to a literary prize in a lot and uh, she won it. But when the jury um, discovered this, that, that it was a, a woman that wrote that, there was a big scandal, so she decided to just after that um, publish under the name of Victor Catala, and we know her um, as uh, with with that name. For me, it's a very interesting um, author because uh, she started talking about um, women and rural uh, spaces. Uh, very soon, and um, she had a lot of main characters, which were uh, women. I don't know if she would call herself a uh, feminist um, now, because it was, there was a time where writers uh, didn't, didn't want to know anything about the word feminism. But for me, it's a very feminist author, because um, uh, one of the themes that appears in, in, in her um, uh, in her books, in all of her books, is violence against women. And violence in these um, conditions, in the rural area where the conditions are very hard. I mean, it's not the same living in, in the city than living in, 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 the, in the rural areas. I feel very close to her because she's talking about uh, Catalan society, uh, at the beginning of the 20th century in Lampurda, which is very different from um, the culture I'm coming from, which is the north of, um, of Morocco. I was born in, in a small, very small village in the north of, of Morocco. But when I was reading her, um, um, I could see that it was exactly the same situation. I mean, uh, the same conditions that women in, in this in this uh, places were faced to the same uh, uh, injustices, the same violence, the same um, problems as women um, in the place I was uh, I was born. I grew up thinking that there was something that had to do with my own culture. So. That was very problematic for me because I felt like it's because of my origins that I'm suffering this uh, discrimination. It's not because it's a universal thing. And after um, reading um, authors like like uh, Victor Català, I could see that uh, discrimination is a very universal thing. So it doesn't depend on the way you 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 were born or the culture of your father. So uh, I could have a, a, a better relationship with my origins thanks to uh, Victor Català, because Victor Català showed me that um, this uh, uh, patriarchy is, is um, universal and we as uh, women come uh, all of us come from the, the, the same place and we have to face and, and fight against the, the same discrimination. Chapter 1. The Ascent After passing through Ridorta, they had come across a wagon going their way, and Matias, who wanted to preserve his strength, asked the driver if he would mind taking them as far as the foot of the mountain. 
The peasant, beaming at the prospect of a little conversation, made room for the man by his side and told Mila to make herself comfortable on the straw mats at the back. She looked gratefully at that unknown benefactor, for though strong, she was exhausted. Her husband had said the trip from Yiskens, where the delivery man had left them, to Ridorta would take less than half an hour. But they had been walking at least an hour and a quarter when they saw the town's blackened steeple rising above the green hill. Another fifteen minutes passed before they saw the wagon, and what with the sun, the dust, and the rough dirt road, the poor woman had fallen into a very bad temper. Once settled, with her back to the man and her bundle of clothes beside her, she untied the kerchief round her head, and taking the ends in her hands, beat it to fan her face. She was hot, and the cool breeze flowed over her temples and neck like a gentle, though slightly unnerving, caress. When she stopped fanning herself, she felt calmer, and ready to look at the pretty sights Matthias had so often described. She gazed from side to side. Behind them, the road twisted and turned, full of holes, tracks, and caked muddy ridges the wagon wheels wore down with such excruciating slowness that they would not be level till the middle of summer. After that, the road would become a sea of dust till the autumn rains returned. On the left was a high embankment that jutted out at the top, as though about to cave in onto the road, but it was held back by rough, uneven walls that bulged here and there and were more dangerous than the embankment itself. Above them were fields enclosed by rows of maguez, whose stiff fleshy leaves slashed the air like bouquets of swords, and in some places by swaying tamarisks and rows of buckthorn, whose white blossoms, girded by thorns, had just begun to flower. Also, I would like to to recommend uh, Victor Catalan because she's a wonderful writer. She she has um, very characters that you never forget when you read um, about them. She's an author that has to be uh, translated into English and readers in English have to have the opportunity to know him.